2.6 transformations of graphs. So we're going to be taking these, um, what we call parent functions, I'm going to show you those here in a second, and we're going to be moving them around, and we're going to see how certain numbers affect um, the shape or position or direction of a particular graph. So first off, let's talk about the parent functions. And those are your sort of basic bare bones, nothing changed about it function. Okay, you'll see what I mean here in a sec. Um, so this is on page 229 in your book. Uh, we have linear functions. Okay, they can be put into slope-intercept form, y equals or f of x equals mx plus b. And then, of course, if it's a constant function, it's going to be y equals something which makes it a horizontal line every time. The identity function is y equals x. Okay, and that always cuts right through the first and third quadrant, and, and we can alter, and notice how x and y are the same. That's why it's called the identity, because they mirror each other. Okay, those are the first two. <clears throat> the second two that we want to look at, and I didn't quite do them in order, but I put them in how they're related to each other. This is a quadratic, which is a parabola, okay? And so that's the basic y equals or f of x equals x squared. And then the inverse of that is the square root. So if I square rooted both sides, this is what you would get. So notice it's kind of a parabola. It's like a half parabola, and it's on its side. So that's the f of x equals the square root of x. So it's sort of the top part. The bottom part would be the negative of that. So we'll talk about that later. Um, the next two are the cube function, cubic function. So it kind of does this little jog right here in the middle. And then the cube root is similar, except it's on its side. Okay. There's two more we're going to look at, and those are one is the absolute value function. If you remember, that's just a v. So whenever you see a v, you know it's an absolute value function. And then we have um, uh, one over x, y equals one over x. And this is actually called a hyperbola, okay, where you have similar looking, almost they look a lot like parabolas almost. They're bounded by the axes, um, and they have what's called asymptotes. There's an asymptote there at uh, the line x equals 0, and there's an asymptote there at the line y equals 0, where the graph actually never touches the, those axes. So those are the parent functions, and we're going to talk about how to transform them and, and how certain numbers and signs impact those transformations. One of the key things I want to point out is we're not actually going to do any graphing. All I want you to do is identify what the parent function will do based off of certain uh, numbers or signs. And then we'll also generate some transformations based off of that information. All right, so let's talk about the transformations. First off, we have translations. And translations are just taking the graph and sliding it. Okay? Um, so you're going to slide it left, right, or up or down. And that's um, what a translation is, also known as a slide, because it is a slide. Um, so here's how we know when a graph moves up or down or left or right. We have to look um, at a vertical slide or up or down slide happens when we take a number and add it or subtract it to the outside of the next term. And I, and I put outside in quotation marks because it's, because it's not in with the x. You'll see what I mean. There'll, be, there, there'll need to be some grouping symbols to be inside. Okay. So here are some examples. Notice, so I've got this x squared and the plus 7 is outside of the x because the squaring takes precedence. The minus 3 is outside of the absolute value. And then this one, um, actually, because of, whenever you have a um, just a linear function, it doesn't matter. The outside inside doesn't really apply. So when you see things like this, when it's outside of the squared or outside of the cube or outside of the fraction or outside of the variable, this is going to be an up or down slide. So all you need to do is say, okay, this one is going to go up 7. Okay, since it's outside, it's up or down. And this 
when it's negative, that means it goes down 3. And this one will go up 9. Okay. So when you're working on this, and you're looking at some of the graphs, or you're looking at the equations, all you're going to have to do is write this. Tell me that it goes up 7, down 3, up 9, whatever. Okay. And that's all you have to write. Okay. The next part is going to have to do with the inside. Okay. The key thing here is it's a horizontal left or right shift. It goes in the opposite direction of the sign. So with a vertical slide, we went the same direction we normally go. Positive means up, negative means down. For horizontal slides, it goes the opposite direction. Uh, so when I, when I say that, so normally we look at this and go left 5. This is on the inside, right? Inside and inside the parentheses. But it goes the opposite direction. It actually goes right 5. And this one, again, it's inside with the x. And instead of going, we go the opposite sign. So the opposite direction, normally we'd think of this and go right, but we have to go opposite, and so this actually makes us go left too. So that's sort of the difference between inside and outside. It's literally inside with the x. The outside is sort of pushed to the side and not in with the x. So that's, that's uh, translations, slides. Okay. Let's talk about reflections or flips and I want you to actually use the word reflection um, when you when you do this uh, actually I don't care you can say reflection or flip it's the same thing so uh, in in the cases that we're gonna look at we're gonna look at uh, reflections over the x-axis or reflections over the y-axis or flips over the x-axis or flips over the y-axis okay so that's what we're gonna do it's gonna flip so we're gonna take the parent function flip it over the x-axis or flip it over the y-axis. Now here's how you're going to tell whether it flips over the x or it flips over the y. Okay? If the ne it, this all has to do with the negative sign. Okay? The negative signs will make it flip. If it's, if it's positive, it's not going to flip. It's not going to reflect. If the negative is outside of the x, so we're going to stick with that inside-outside concept. If it's outside of the x, it flips over the x-axis. So basically it flips down if it's up. Okay. But we want to say flips or reflects over the x-axis. Right. So here, here are two examples of outside. I mean, in some cases, it's going to clearly be outside, right? Because I've got um, absolute value, for example. The minus is clearly outside of the x. This one, I think, sometimes gets confusing because I think you, some of you will think that this minus is being squared. But really what you want to think is that what's squaring and what's being squared is just the x, not the minus. If we wanted the minus squared too, it would be on the inside and there'd be a set of parentheses. Okay? So uh, if it's inside the x, then it'll flip. So in that case, just slide it inside with the absolute value. It'll flip over the y-axis. So flip about the y-axis. So it's a, a horizontal flip versus a vertical flip up here. Vertical reflection, horizontal reflection. So this will take that parabola and flip it over the y-axis and in this case we'll give it the same thing um, same with this one but this one will make it flip down over the x-axis so what you would say in those kinds of cases is um, in here we'd say reflects over the x-axis reflects over the y-axis okay. the other kind of thing that we have is a dilation and now here's where I'm going to use a little bit different terminology than what the book uses right? To me, you're taking a, 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 um, a parent function, you're either pulling it, stretching it up, or you're smashing it down and compressing it. The book uses the word shrinks, and I just don't like that. It's, uh, I, I prefer stretched or compressed, and that's the way you'll see it uh, in your answer keys and on your tests. So just get used to that. Here's how you know what's happening, how, what the difference is. When the x is multiplied by a number greater than 1, okay, then it's stretched. So it's like you grab it and pull it upwards. So it's stretched vertically by a factor of whatever the number is. Okay. So here's an example. This is, this is the parent function, uh, y equals x squared. If I multiply it by 5, notice how, and this is the same window, it got skinnier. It's like I grabbed the red... Um, graph and I pulled it straight up and stretched it out. So this would be considered a stretch or vertical stretch of a factor of 5. So let me write that out because that's important. This is a vertical 
stretch. Or actually, you know what? I'm going to say it. I'm going to say it a little bit differently. Vertically stretched by a factor of five. So when you get to do your homework and you get a problem that has a dilation, what you're going to you're looking for that number that's being multiplied and you're just going to say in this case vertically stretched by a factor of 5. So we're stretching it out vertically, pulling it upwards, okay? Um, the other case and here they are on the same graph just so you can kind of see that. Uh, the other case is when it's compressed, which means it's being smushed down, okay? And this is what the book uses when, it, they, when they say shrinks. I, I just don't care for that word in this context. Um, so when x is multiplied by a number greater than 0 but less than 1, okay? Uh, think about it this way. Greater than 0 but less than 1 is an interval, right? So every kind of number inside of here is a fraction or a decimal. So if you multiply by a fraction or a decimal, then it's going to smash it down and compress it. So it's going to widen out instead of get skinnier like the last one did. Okay? So here's an example. Okay? Again, here's the same parent function. Now I multiplied it by 1 fourth, and it's the same grid, and it's, it basically just took the red graph and smashed it down and made it widen out. And so what you'd want to say here is you would say vertically compressed by a factor of one fourth. Okay, so that would be your explanation. Again, you don't have to graph anything. You don't have to graph anything. I'm asking you to look at the numbers and tell me what's going to happen based off of the numbers. If you want to graph it, you can, especially if the graph you calculate, punch it in there and see what you get. And then, then see what it, but I'm not requiring, because in the directions in the homework, it tells you to graph all this stuff. I do not want you to graph. I'm giving you permission not to do that. I want you to look at the numbers. I want you to look at the signs and be confident about how the parent function is going to change. Now, the last here is putting them on together. So this is that vertical compression. So it's basically pushing that red graph down, smushing it down, and you'd end up with the blue graph. Okay, so that's transformations. I, I'm just touching on some of that stuff. The parent functions may be a little bit new to you, and you'll have to um, look at some of those a little more carefully. But other than that, uh, we've got that inside-outside idea with slides up and down, left, right. You've got the inside-outside idea with... Um, reflections over the x-axis or reflections over the y-axis and then you have the multiplier um, which will tell you stretched or compressed